Hi, today we're painting a really simple and straightforward seascape. First I have my cerulean blue and I'm popping that on the top of the canvas with a large filbert brush. Then I'm adding white underneath and I've taken a smaller filbert brush to gently blend the colours together and using the curved shape of the filbert brush to map out the shape of the clouds. I'm using the same blue to add some shadows and structure along the bottom of the clouds. When the sky's completely dry, we can remove our masking tape and move it upwards, then coming back in with cerulean blue again to block out our sea. The next step is to block out where the cliffs will be. I've taken some yellow ochre and added a little Payne's grey, and I'm marking out roughly where the cliffs are going to be. I'm using a size 8 round brush, but you can use whatever brush you're comfortable with. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect because we can alter it and adjust it as we go. At this point, we really just want to block it out so we have something to work with as we continue painting. For the front part of the cliffs, I'm coming in with a darker colour. Again, I've used my yellow ochre, but this time I've added cerulean blue and some Payne's grey and I'm using vertical brush strokes to paint in the front of the cliffs. This is where you can alter the shape a little bit if you want to. And then again, we'll come in and we'll block out the foreground. The next step is to block out the blues and whites of the ocean. The front part of the sea is going to be a little bit lighter in colour because the water will be a little bit choppier and a little bit rougher around the rocks. So I'm keeping that quite light. I'm going to make it slightly darker in the distance. We can add a few fallen rocks at the base of the cliffs now. Again, I'm just using my yellow ochre with a little Payne's grey. You can put the rocks anywhere that you like, anywhere you think looks good. I have my small chisel blender now and I'm going to darken up the sea a little bit in the distance. Just add a little bit of texture and an indication of some waves. And again, I've kept the front part of the sea a little lighter because that's where the waves will be crashing up against the rocks. Now I'm moving back to the rocks and I'm starting to add a little bit of detail. I tend to move around the painting and build up a little bit here and there, but you do whatever's comfortable for you. For the really dark colour at the front, I'm using sap green and I've added cerulean blue and Payne's grey. And this is where I can really block out those darker areas at the front of the cliff. To create a bit of distance, a good tip is to keep the lines slightly further apart the closer they are to you. So as they go into the distance, they'll be closer together. Now we've got our lighter colour again, our yellow ochre with a little bit of white and we can start building in that structure and the curve at the top of the cliffs where it goes down onto the cliff front. At this point I'm still using my 8 round but you can use a smaller brush if you want to get more detail. I'm using the very tip of the brush for the fine detail but a small brush would work just as well. We can add some really nice warm colours, we can add some light highlights 
and slowly build up that structure and shape of the cliff as it curves over at the top. We're back to the water again. I'm making the blue slightly darker at the base of the cliff because there'll be a little bit of shadow there. And then to get the choppiness and roughness in the water, I'm using cerulean blue and also white. I'm just moving my brush from side to side to create that movement and choppiness in the water. And you can do as many layers as you like. You can go over it with white, you can go over it with blue until you're happy with the result. I've got a size zero round brush now and I'm coming in to add a few more details, some highlights, a little bit more colour and again just gradually building it up. For the grass in the foreground, I have a flat brush. I've made a dark green colour with sap green and Payne's grey. I'm just putting the brush on its side and doing vertical brush strokes to fill out as much of the space as I can to make it look like grass. And once I've finished with the dark green, I've added a little bit of cadmium yellow and I'm doing exactly the same again. Once that's done, we can then get a liner brush or a small round brush and we'll start adding more delicate blades of grass and a little bit of detail. You can use whatever colours you like for this. You can add some yellow ochre, you can add some yellow, some light greens. Just slowly build it up until you're happy. We'll add some yellow flowers now. First I've made a darker yellow by adding a little bit of Payne's Grey to the cadmium yellow and then I'm going to come in on top with cadmium yellow and a liner brush and just add in that little bit more detail and make them more vibrant. I'm making the flowers smaller as they recede into the distance. And then we can come in with some really nice vibrant grass over the top. It doesn't matter if the grass goes over the flowers. Just a few extra delicate blades of grass to add some interest. I hope you've enjoyed today's painting tutorial. Here are some other videos I think you might like to watch next. See you next time.